So again, thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon in Australia, and it's very early morning uh, in Europe. <laughs> I want to introduce you to RIVIS, which is a European project which initiated this symposium. Um, and it's, it's very good to establish collaborations and relationships with uh, new regions outside of Europe. And that's basically the, the objective of the RIVIS project. Um, so uh, I'm Susan Denke and I'm the, the Instruct uh, Eric hub coordinator. I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but Instruct Eric is a structural biology research infrastructure. It's one of the research infrastructures in the European landscape of infrastructures that have been put together. Um, and uh, the research infrastructure program in Europe has been going for some years now. In fact, it was first formed in 2006. And since then it's had several updates uh, to its composition uh, over the years, the latest being uh, last year in 2021. And collectively, it now uh, comprises a landscape of 65 research infrastructures, 11 having been added to this group in the last year or so. And they cover the areas of energy, environment, health and food, uh, physical sciences uh, and, enge and, and engineering, and also so social and cultural innovation. So uh, it covers a very broad um, group of uh, scientific and cultural areas. Um, and the objectives, obviously, of the research infrastructure program itself is to uh, improve instrumentation across Europe, to, uh, to establish uh, better responses to various emergencies, uh, and to build a community of researchers who work together and, and together can be more powerful uh, than working alone. So as I said, the key objectives are, are uh, really to provide a cohesive response to uh, uh, the challenges that, that we face in Europe, um, but also to uh, bring people together so that fragmentation of research efforts is reduced within Europe. Obviously, we cover many countries uh, and uh, each of those countries have national programs, but collectively we can work together very effectively. And so the research infrastructure program does that. It also avoids duplication of effort where, where that happens. Uh, it makes more of the investments that can be made collectively across Europe. Um, we also uh, are able then to join forces with other international efforts uh, to run very large or uh, complex uh, and expensive infrastructures. And that uh, has been ongoing for many years now, uh, and we're now in a, in, a, in a position to respond to global challenges that have been coming up quite recently. Um, the, the European programme has also had an opportunity to work together um, to develop a charter for access, which is in use by most of the research infrastructures now, and having common standards and practices is, is very useful. Uh, across a, a, a very diverse landscape such as ours. So why do we need the RIVIS project? Well, because of the, uh, the, the, the work that has gone into developing the research infrastructure landscape in Europe, uh, we now need to make the community that we serve, that is our scientists and our cultural researchers, um, our physicists and our engineers, we need to tell them what we have to offer. And uh, in fact, we have uh, a huge range of benefits to offer, as, as I'm sure you have uh, in your region as well. Uh, but the visibility for these uh, services that the, the research infrastructures provides could be improved. Um, across the countries that we cover in Europe, there is quite a variability in the knowledge uh, of uh, research infrastructures and the services they provide and the benefits that, that uh, they could be sharing in. Um, so the, the uh, research infrastructures that we have in, involved directly in the RIVs project are shown here, um, and they uh, represent the life sciences, uh, the social sciences, uh, also the digital and physical sciences and the energy sector as well. So uh, we have um, 
these research infrastructures themselves, uh, partners in the project, um, but collectively they represent uh, almost 350 network partners. So each research infrastructure has its own network of connections, uh, inst educational institutions uh, in various areas within Europe, and each of them bring those partners and, and associates to the table and we get a, a very broad view across Europe of the situation. So RIVIS uh, has, has a pretty broad representation. So the way that we're doing this uh, to gain visibility for research infrastructures is firstly by hosting international symposia, uh, of which this is one. And we have previously held two others. We, we held one in South Africa, but having representation from a number of countries around Africa. Um, the second was held uh, in the Latin American region, uh, and we had uh, excellent um, uh, take up there. Uh, and in fact, in both of these regions, both Africa and Latin America, we've had a number of uh, collaborations and new relationships form out of those symposia. And we very much hope that the same can happen here as well. Uh, in establishing new relationships with Australia too. Um, so uh, the symposia that we've uh, held have always been supported by white papers. Um, there is a white paper for the Australia symp Symposium and uh, that is available, I think, on the Hoover platform. Um, but you can also find it on our website as well. And it just sets the scene for uh, what is, uh, what's happening at the moment in the region, um, who the, 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 the actors are in, in the region and, uh, and where we could perhaps uh, make a difference by establishing new relationships. And the white papers really are, are aimed not only at the community that the research infrastructures uh, are serving or are targeting, uh, but also policymakers and funders who uh, inevitably have input into uh, the development and use of research infrastructures and the funding support that is required um, to keep those running and, and the investment that is required as well to, to keep them up to date and keep them fit for purpose. So uh, one of the other things that we have done in RIVIS as part of our program is to develop a communication toolkit that RIs, the research infrastructures can use uh, to help them develop their message. Uh, and uh, there are various uh, um, tools in there that help people identify their community and provide the right information to the right people at the right time. And again, that is available to, <clears throat> excuse me, to anybody who uh, is interested in, in, um, in using that. Um, so when we were building the communication toolkit, we actually took advantage of uh, bringing together the communications um, officers and staff and professionals from various research infrastructures uh, and other facilities and entities around the world to uh, share experiences and knowledge about how to do this. Uh, we established an online uh, workspace. We use Slack and that has been uh, very helpful. Uh, and so we've, we've currently got over 300 members of uh, this working group uh, in Slack who constantly share experiences um, and this has been very useful actually to refine um, the, the toolkit that we have. And we also have uh, in our toolkit um, uh, a software suite that uh, provides a number of tools, but also uh, as part of that um, provides a platform for a website builder. Um, and so again, the new research infrastructure or facility who doesn't have their own website yet, who doesn't have anything to show, can very easily use this toolkit just to do that, um, build a simple website so that you can be visible pretty, pretty much straight away. Um, you might find on the website, on our website, also um, a collection of all the portals for the European research infrastructures, which you might find useful. It gives a, 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 a short breakdown of, of what each of the research infrastructures does and gives you the website 
where you can access information about those services and, and uh, capabilities of those uh, research infrastructures in Europe. So I think that's all I wanted to say. It's, it's um, a fairly short introduction, um, but we very much hope that this is going to be a successful three-day uh, symposium. Uh, we've looked forward to this for quite a while. Um, and uh, I, I congratulate everybody for having brought this together under quite difficult circumstances. I'm sure you appreciate that uh, we all expected to be able to visit you uh, in, in person and enjoy a personal networking experience, but I'm afraid we've, we've done the best that we can. It will have to be virtual, but we're very happy to uh, be with you. And I very much hope that you enjoy the next three days and find it beneficial and interesting. So thank you very much. Um, and I pass you now to the next speaker.